Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well wherever you are in the world. So, a little bit of a different vlog and I have been terrible with vlogging so I do apologise but I am currently getting ready to go to the gym. I'm going to be there all day but this vlog is going to kind of be showing you one, a trip that I'm going on here tomorrow which I'm really, really excited for. So, I am actually going to Paris um, and this was planned before I knew that I had the Arnold invite so obviously wasn't going to miss this trip but it's just going to be slightly different obviously because I am currently five weeks out so um we want to make sure that obviously we're keeping everything you know on point doing what needs to be done all that type of thing i'm only going for three days um and two nights so it's not like a really really long trip or anything like that so it's not too bad but we still need to make sure that we you know do everything correctly so one thing that i have done especially because it's only a two-day trip is made sure that i've done you know the week but prior, I've done all cardio that's need to be done, all that type of thing. And each week I do have two rest days a week. So training wise, I'm actually not gonna be training whilst I'm out there. I'm gonna be training when I get back. So there's two days that we're out there that I'm obviously staying there and I'm not gonna be, you know, going to the gym or anything like that. I'm just gonna be doing my cardio. We're gonna be getting a lot of steps in and that's mainly what, what my expenditure is gonna be. And also I kind of plan this to make sure that it gave, I gave myself enough time to be able to rest during like have a little bit of a rest during this trip because things have been very very stressful um you know i've been prepping and dieting and doing everything for a long time now so i think this trip is really going to help kind of de-stress me because i've been very very stressed recently so i think sometimes you just need to do that especially i know it's obviously you're five weeks out at, well i'm five weeks out at the moment but sometimes within a prep, you just need to have a little bit of downtime, make sure you rest, recover, all that type of thing. And then it kind of gives you a mental reset as well. So I think I'm really looking forward to this because it's going to give me that reset that I need, if I'm honest. Um, so yeah, but so I've put it on my Instagram that I am going to Paris and loads of people said that they want me to show, you know, the places that I go and all that type of thing. And then also um, how, the, how I'm prepping whilst I'm out in Paris. Uh, Paris. So I'm going to kind of show you guys what I do. Pretty much packed all my stuff that I need to take with me. Supplements wise and you know food wise and all that type of thing. A lot of people are asking me how I kind of do it and I'll kind of show you what I do. Um, it's very very basic and then we can kind of go from there. But yeah. Okay so the main thing that I get asked is um, how do I take like all my supplements right? Like my vitamins and all that type of thing and I just take a pill box. So pill pot is like perfect i mean i have this every for like everyday use anyway just because it's so much easier to travel with instead of, instead of taking like a million and one bottles with you um so i just put all my supplements in there because obviously there's a lot of supplements i take like you know omega-3s um psyllium husk i've got uh my probiotics i've got vitamin C, like loads of different things. So, and things that I need to take every day and need to keep consistent with. So make sure that I take just a pill pot um, just so it's spread evenly and that's pretty much it. I take one of these, a big bag with me to put all my toiletries in and all that type of thing. And I actually do have my supplements in there as well as in like my uh, protein powder. Um, that's one thing that I'm gonna be taking, probably having a lot more than, not food, but probably just as an easy, go-to meal replacement um i think it will be easier when i'm on the go just to have a, a protein shake um whilst i'm out and about and all that type of thing and then one other thing that i've done is obviously cooked all my protein so i've cooked all my protein and i'm taking very very simple carbs with me so i have low carbs anyway so it's not actually that like too bad but i have taken a pack of rice cakes uh well i'll probably get another one so two packs of rice cakes and cooked all my protein for the next three days so i've frozen two of two boxes of them and then then one of them is unfrozen so it's for tomorrow so that's pretty much how I travel um, and then as and when I'll go to the shop I'll get some eggs I'll get some veggies and if I'm out so if we go to restaurants and stuff I'll ask for a Caesar salad with no sauce no oil or anything like that pretty much so it's really easy and simple to travel when you're on prep and it's it's nothing too difficult so I think it's just a case of knowing how you need to do it so this, this is my protein, so I've got one ground turkey, that's like 500 grams cooked, 
and then chicken with some spinach and stuff in there as well. So very easy, super simple to be able to kind of like travel. Um, and I also take with me box of protein. So that's, I know you can't see that very well. That is a box of protein powder. So just to make sure that I'm obviously keeping up to date with all my protein intake, all that type of thing. And then most likely I'll just take a, a jar of peanut butter with me, which is what my fats are gonna be. So rice cakes, peanut butter, protein. Veggies I can get as and when. So it's very, it's so easy to travel. And one other thing that I take with me, which you can get on Amazon and it's pretty easy to get, is a collapsible meal prep box. So as you can see, it's flat and then it opens up. So I'll take one of these out with me for a day, collapse this like this, and then as and when I'll just scoop in how much I need protein wise and I'll take my scales with me as well. So very super easy and simple. It doesn't need to be over complicated. It doesn't need to be, you know, sometimes it's not glamorous, don't get me wrong, but it gets the job done and that's what we need within the bodybuilding world. Just, we need to just get it done, you know? So um, if you guys have seen my last video, you'll know that I was, you know, trying to do a full day of eating, trying to do a uh, day in the life back in Dubai, but it's been very, very hectic for me um, recently and stuff like that. And I have, you know, mentally been struggling a little bit more than I would like to on a prep. So it just makes things sometimes a little bit harder. But um, like I said, regardless, a body order mindset is you get, get what you need to do done. Sometimes you just need to do without thinking. And that's the main thing that's kind of been pushing me this, this um, prep. So we've got five more weeks until the Arnold's and then we've got a long time off, which I'm really, really excited for um, to be able to kind of just reset. Cause I think that's what I need mostly. It's just me resetting and mentally relaxing. So I'm excited for that. Hi, we're out to party. The sticker comes up to stick out, then So what you just saw there was this morning, me and my dad, we were packing up some of his products that he actually sells. Now I'm gonna get into it a little bit more of what he actually does. So he owns a NGO company. So an NGO is a on non-profit organization and he has been doing that for years now um, and it's called Care for Baskets. And I'm not gonna go into the full, full depths of the kind of story. Sorry, my throat, throat is really, really dry today. The, the UK is absolutely freezing right now, so like my throat's so dry all the time. Anyway, but he's been doing this for absolutely years now and he has been, what he kind of does is he gets weavers from you know, Ghana, Accra, where he's um, originally from. And he gives them a job and he gets workers to weave the baskets out of plastic bags. Now, those plastic bags are collected 
from the streets of Ghana. So he's technically clearing up the streets of Ghana um, and using that, you know, waste as, you know, something that can be made into something really, really beautiful, you know? So he's been doing that for, for a few years, for years now, if I'm honest. Um, and it's something that I think is, it, I look at it and I just, I get so inspired by him for what he does with helping people, how much he does for the community and his home. He hasn't been able to go to Ghana for a, a few years now because of like COVID or that type of thing and then he has a few things that he can't reasons as to why he can't go over to Ghana at the moment and stuff like that but hopefully I think he will be going at the end of the year and I actually might go with him so it'd be really cool to kind of show you guys actually what he does and I don't know obviously I've kind of showed little bits of it before my YouTube but never fully so I definitely want to try and like showcase more of because the reason I was helping him is because he is actually going online now he's struggled with online so that's why he hasn't kind of gone online and now I've like helped him out a little bit so he will be going online very soon on Etsy and I will put the website and the Instagram in the link in the description box below because so you guys can check it out and like see the full story because honestly the stuff this man does is just for me so inspiring and hopefully it can inspire some of you guys as well so but I am currently on my way to the airport because I'm going back to Dubai so as you guys know in my previous video I have actually pulled out of the Arnold so I won't be there I won't be in America so I've decided to come at home um, and I'm very excited. I'm excited to get back into routine, excited to see Max, excited to get in a good headspace and all that type of thing again, which I'm really excited for. So yes, I will be going back to Dubai. It's gonna be a long time because I've got to get to get the train over there right now with all my suitcases. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited to go home. Let's go. <laughs> Love you guys. Look at this little spread. Oh, thank you for the flowers and the pillow. It's a tradition now, he always has to get me some sort of little thing. What else have you got? Oh. <laughs> so, we are back in the land of sand. So we're back in Dubai and it honestly feels so nice to be back here and back into a routine, back in my office. Like everything just feels good. It feels really, really good um, again, which is really, really nice. I think, I think I definitely overdid it with the travel from, you know, living in the US for two and a half months. And even prior to that, I was in the UK for a good two and a half weeks. So I think I just slightly overdid it just a little bit. So, and it was Valentine's Day yesterday and it was really nice to just spend quality time with Max. Um, Cause I feel like I haven't done that literally for months because I've either been prepping or doing something else or something like that. So it's just been a lot. <laughs> It's been a lot, so, but it's been really, really nice to be back and into routine, back in my office, like everything just feels really good again. Um, and I'm really, I wanna say a massive, massive thank you to everyone for the support on my previous video, my Instagram, my circle, my close people just in general giving me these talks because I was really nervous to post that post, I'm not gonna lie, or the video in general. And I was very, very close to not doing it, obviously, I wanted to explain what I was going through, but I didn't know how to, if I'm honest. Um, but I'm glad obviously people got the idea of what I was going through. And again, no one really knows what everyone goes through, you know? And there's just a lot of things that had piled and piled and piled up that I just couldn't take anymore, that I needed to, one thing needed to go, and unfortunately that was prep. Um, so, and it's a case of choosing myself, you know, and making sure that I'm in the best position I can be in for my business, my health, my mental state, everything, you know? Um, and I'm glad that people saw it like that because I hate the thought of people thinking, oh, she's giving up or, oh, she's doing this. And that's not the case. Um, or sometimes I see that myself, like at first, I kind of was like, Phoebe, you're quitting. Like you're being, you know, you're being such a, a bad athlete because you're just quitting and you're giving up. And that's how I saw it. Whereas actually, I don't see it like that. I'm choosing to, I chose to make this decision to upkeep my longevity. And that's always been my goal. Um, when 
doing this bodybuilding thing, this competing thing is longevity within the sport um, and doing it in a way that is obviously challenging, but not to the point where I hate it, you know? And I've discussed this before where if I hate a prep and it's really something that I'm not happy with, then why am I doing it? So that's something I wanted to say thank you for because honestly, the response was mad and I had so many messages from all of you guys so I just want to say a massive massive thank you um it really does mean a lot it really does and secondly I wanted to announce that I have a posing seminar coming on the 1st of April in the UK which I'm really excited for so I'll put the poster on the screen for you now this is going to be something really really special because I actually am going to get two speakers involved so the first one is going to be James he likes to call himself a resilience coach and he's actually my therapist. So this is something I've been working with James for over a year now, um, or, or no, sorry, almost a year now. And he has changed my mindset hugely within my business, within my competitive career. And I have no doubt that he was one of the reasons I've been so successful in 2022 because he's made me, he was able to make me change my mindset and see things in a way that I couldn't see before, um, which was really, really cool. So I wanted to give him a platform to be able to talk to you guys on a level where it's really, really exciting. So it is going to be um, in Manchester on the 1st of April, and it's going to be five hours long. So the reason it's five hours is obviously he is going to be speaking probably for around 45 minutes to an hour. We also have the CEO of Compact, Jasmine. So she runs the Compact site where it has everything you need for show day. I've been working with them for many many years now and it's really really fun to see how she's grown because we've both kind of been there from our beginning journeys and we've only kind of soared together which is really really cool to see so she's literally the queen of shoes jewelry tanning everything you could possibly need for show day like i always get those questions of like what do you put in your show day bag and honestly it changes every time but like she is the person to ask she's the best person to ask so she's going to be speaking as well and then we also have me and my lovely posing coach beatrice we are going to be doing a two hour seminar as well, or around two and a half hours seminar, and a Q&A with us as well. So we've both been to the Olympia, she's been to the Olympia twice, we've both been to the Arnold's, we have around 14 years of experience put together of being on stage and over 50 shows that we've done. So we have so much to cover and so much to talk about, so it's not one to miss. So if you want any tickets, go to the link in the description box below and get signed up because it's gonna be a really, really good one. So I'm really, really excited for it. To end this video, I wanted to answer a few questions that people asked me on my Instagram. So I posted a little uh, Q&A box yesterday just to kind of say, what do you want to know? Um, and I said, it could be anything if it's to do with what I'm doing now, if like anything. So one of the first ones, or one of the most common ones actually is, how are you feeling like with the decision that you made? And if I'm going to be completely honest, so much better because I feel lighter and I feel less stressed. I feel like I can relax now. Obviously the Olympia prep and just being in America in general was an absolute blessing. I absolutely loved being over there um, for my Olympia prep, but it was a lot. And I didn't realize it until I started prepping again, how much my body still needed a break and how much my mind needed a break. So I'm really happy that I'm able to do that now and I have my energy back. I have my kind of mental, mental stability back, if I'm gonna be honest, because I feel like I was doing that prep and I was starting to resent everything I was doing, which I did, I hate being like that, you know? When your heart's not in it, when your mind's not in it, when everything's just not in it, and you're just doing it because. Um, and that's, you should never step on stage if you're doing that. So no, I am feeling a lot better. There's still a lot of background things that I obviously will never discuss that are going on that are stressful from day to day, but that's life in general. Prep doesn't obviously, you know, stop whilst life is going on but sometimes you have to make those decisions where you do have to choose life you do have to choose what's good for you and that's what i did and i'm very happy with the decision i get fomo so bad about on season stuff when i'm on off season and vice versa so she gets kind of like fear of missing out when she's either in off season or even in she, when she's in prep about the other things so for example like when you're in an off season she gets like fear of missing out when she's like looking at people on stage, if that makes sense. 
Um, any advice for that? If I'm honest, it's not the worst thing in the world because it's you get excited about your own journey. So it's not a case of don't look at it in a negative way, look at it in a positive way. Like be excited to step on stage and be excited for your off season and kind of vice versa again. Like always be excited for the next chapter because that is ultimately your next chapter. When you're in an off season, your next chapter is going into a prep, whenever that is, whether it's a year, whether it's two years, whether it's next few months, be excited for it versus being like, oh, fear of missing out on a prep now. Do you know what I mean? Be excited, like I'm putting in the work now to look so much better than what I did for last time I stepped on stage. Be excited about it versus being like, I just want to do it now. I don't know if that's advice, I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how I kind of look at it. Like already, it sounds silly, but someone posted the other day, you know, saying that the Olympia is coming up and it's in Florida, really exciting. And I was like, I cannot wait to beat my physique from Olympia. And don't get me wrong, I don't want to step on stage now, because, you know, I was going to, but I'm excited to step on stage again, um, but I'm not stepping on stage now. If that makes sense, I'm not, I am so ready to, like, I'm excited to bring my best. Do you know what I mean? No question, just sending you lots of love and happy Black History Month. Happy Black History Month, I love that so much. How long did it take you to turn pro? So it actually took me, two and a half years to turn pro. And it was a very complicated way because obviously in back in the UK, well, back in the day in the UK and EU, it was very, very difficult to get your pro card. It was actually in the UK, you could only get your pro card once a year. And it was to give given to one guy and one girl back in like, this was back in 2015, 16, 17 time. And then 2018, um, that is when I got my pro card and that's where um, we had a lot more opportunity coming to the UK and to EU and all that type of thing. But I won my pro card in Spain. I then went on to do the pro show and got second in my first pro debut, which was absolutely incredible. So that's why I always suggest if you get your pro card and you have the opportunity to compete the next day or the same day as a pro, do it because you're the judges are there. The judges are right there. Even if you come dead last, you can get feedback against all those pros that you've just stood on stage with. So I honestly think it's such valuable and important feedback. If you don't want to do it, it's obviously not the worst thing in the world, but I always suggest try and go on stage if you have the opportunity to. No question, just hella proud of you for continuing to make decisions that are best for you. And honestly, it means the world. A lot of people have said that and it means a lot because I do really, I, I always want to make sure that I'm bringing, uh, doing what's best for me. And sometimes obviously we do have to push through and do things that we don't want to do. Like, I don't want to do, you know, hours and hours of cardio a day, but sometimes I have to, um, to get into that lean conditioning. And that's the sacrifice I make to be able to get to where I want to be, but to an extent, you know? So thank you so much for, for that comment. How are you feeling? What's Adam's support with your decision? Now, I do feel like this is such a tough question because don't get me wrong, Adam supports me with everything that I do and he's been great throughout my entire journey. There's been so many ups and downs within my journey and he's always stood by me and everything like that. Um, it's not him, it's me, it sounds like a relationship, but it's me that I sometimes feel like with these decisions I do let him down and the team down where I feel that I, you know, I represent him and his team. So I feel like sometimes these decisions could hinder him, but they don't. Um, but that's just my own thinking, I think. Um, but no, he supports me fully. I know he probably is disappointed in a way, that not disappointed in me, but disappointed because he wanted me to, you know, bring a, 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 an amazing shape and, you know, go up on, there and on the Arnold stage and bring my best. But he also said, if you aren't in that mentality to be able to push and you've got a lot going on, I'd rather you not step on stage. So, and I love that because he wasn't pushing me in the wrong way, he was pushing me in the right direction, which is good. So I think that's something that is very, needed in the coach. A coach is there to push you, yes, but in the right way, not just to push you as hard as you can, you know? Um, so yeah, it, I really appreciate him and everything he's done for me. So I'm really, really excited to be able to continue our journey and hopefully next year we will, hopefully this year, I keep saying next year is in like the Olympics next year, but it's this year. Hopefully this year for the Olympia, we'll be doing the exact same where I go to Vegas, be living out there and be bringing my best shape ever to the Olympia stage. Okay, one more because I thought this was a really interesting one and I haven't actually been asked about it for a while. What did you study in university? And now I don't even know if like many of you know that I actually went to university and I quit one year in, or not even one year, like eight months in. 
to pursue bodybuilding um, as a career. So I studied business or international business management because I wanted to do exactly what I'm doing now. So I wanted to, I mean not exactly what I'm doing now, but I wanted to be based online, in person, be a PT, um, and teach people, you know, the world of fitness, all that type of thing, uh, be a coach, a fitness coach, which I was for a little bit, and then I decided obviously to go through the posing route, but I did really, that was what I thought I had to do at the time to be where I wanted to be now. So it's really interesting how the dynamics of, you know, my mentality change, and I've never been a very educational person, don't get me wrong, I've never been one to sit in a, sit in, a classroom and read, take notes and all that, it's always been very hard for me to do. I've always been really rubbish at school, not gonna lie, and it's not something that I've always had a lot of focus on versus practicals, going out there and doing things. Um, so university for me was a big step and when I got that, you know, got let into university, I was really, really excited for it and then I got in a few months and I was, I hated it, I really, really hated it and then I kind of was, whilst I was uh, at university, I was also competing and, you know, a lot of people were saying like, you could take this quite far, this whole competing thing and I made the decision like at the end of the year, like do I carry on, you know, doing university or do I quit and pursue my love for bodybuilding and kind of make this my full-time thing um, and I decided to do the latter one, I decided to do the bodybuilding thing, obviously. So it was really, really interesting to see how the dynamic of my life has changed since that decision, but it was the best one I could have done. So I'm really, really happy that I made that decision, obviously, because it's taken me to so many different places in the world that I wouldn't have even imagined. So, but those are all the questions, and I'll probably do that maybe a few times at the end of my videos, just to keep it a bit interesting. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe to my channel because because it really helps support my channel. And just thank you as always. And thank you guys so much for just, just being there. Your kind words means a lot as well so it really does mean everything means a lot so thank you guys so much for watching remember to like and subscribe to my channel and i love you guys so much and i will see you soon